You know that feeling when you mix up your Charlie for your glass? They're street names for narcotics. Well, Oasis made this mistake in 1994, and it created a whole host of issues for them. This is the story of the band's worst gig ever, and how this tiny mistake could have ended Oasis much earlier, but actually ended up making them more loved than ever. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. So before we get to the infamous 1994 gig at Whiskey A Go Go in LA, largely considered to be the band's worst performance ever, let's recap where Oasis was at this point. A month before the gig, Oasis had released their debut album, Definitely Maybe. Critically and commercially, it was a bigger hit than Will Smith smacking Chris Rock. It was released riding on the wave of some incredible singles, Supersonic, Shaker Maker and Live Forever. As a result, it shot to the top of the UK charts, becoming the fastest ever selling UK album at that time. It eventually went on to shift 8.5 million units, which is interestingly the same amount of Parker's in Liam Gallagher's wardrobe. This album would kickstart a revolution of Britpop in the mid-90s, making way for some incredible entries from Pulp, Suede and Blur. Blur would go on to have a media-dominating chart battle with Oasis in 95, further pushing Britpop into the forefront of public consciousness. Blur won that battle, by the way, if you need a reminding. Back to 1994, though. After the success of Definitely Maybe, the band were set to hop over the Atlantic for their first proper tour of the USA. Could we just take a moment in recognition of whoever the tour manager was for Oasis at this point? Because boy, <laughs> they had their work cut out for them. Oasis weren't afraid to bring their non-conforming, chaotic, sticker middle finger up to the music industry charm to the States. Though the rock scene in America was thriving at the time, with the likes of Green Day, Weezer, Pearl Jam and Rage Against the Machine dominating the landscape of anti-establishment 90s rock, compared to Oasis, this scene was pretty tame. Oasis had garnered a reputation for being totally unhandleable. To put it frankly, they were proper d**kheads, with no regard for anything or anyone. America wasn't ready for what had landed on its shores. Imagine loading the Tasmanian devil up with loads of drugs, a repulsive know-it-all attitude, putting millions of pounds in his bank account, giving him the power that comes from an entire nation worshipping their feet, and then setting them loose across America. That would give you an idea of what Oasis were all about. And to prove that, the band almost immediately got into trouble when arriving in LA, West Hollywood, the location of this infamous gig. First, they were kicked out of radio station KROQ for compulsive swearing on air. Pretty normal start. Later though, they were reported to be fighting with bouncers at the Viper Room. And to top it off, armed police officers were called to their accommodation at 6am because Bonehead, the guitarist, kept playing supersonic on his guitar as loudly as possible through the night. Ah, oh, leave him be, he was just practicing. But now you get an idea of the mischief this band had brought to America. 29th of September 1994, the date of the Whiskey A Go Go concert. A legendary venue, a venue that has the power to launch a musical career to new heights. Led Zeppelin, The Who, The Doors, all owe a bit of thanks to this place. Would Oasis put on the performance of their lives and win the hearts of America? No, not quite. In the hours before the gig, one of Oasis's team were tasked with finding some recreational white powder. Not your standard errand, is it? They brought back what they thought was the right narcotic, but actually they brought back something much, much worse. <laughs> As you can imagine, what resulted was the worst set imaginable. That is to say on a technical level, I have no idea what the atmosphere was like in the room, it might have been bloody hilarious. Bass amps reportedly exploded, Noel played completely different songs to the rest of the band, Liam threatened the crowd after someone nearly kicked over his mic, Noel's vocals were all over the place, and Liam would simply sit out some songs because he couldn't be bothered to sing. And of course, the famous Liam Noel bickering. Liam reportedly got in Noel's face and told him to go f himself, and smacked him on the head with a tambourine. By the way, if you'd like to hear the audio from this god-awful set, I've popped a link to it in the description below. There's also a lot of other goodies down there, including a link to try Prime Video totally free for 30 days. There's also a bunch of other goodies down there as well. Go on, have a look! When the set finally came to an end, Noel reportedly left a note saying he'd quit the band and flew to San Francisco where he'd remain for a fortnight. 
before coming to his senses and returning to the tour. You might think a show like this could destroy a band, but for Oasis, it actually made them more loved than ever. Stay with me on this. In America, Oasis had cemented their brutalish, not to be messed with reputation. They weren't just this new band from Britain anymore, they were on the rock and roll map. They were the band that brought total anarchy to LA. When news of the horrific gig reached Britain, fans reacted like proud parents. The ballsy boys doing the nation proud in the way that 90s Brits did best getting rat assed and causing chaos abroad. So in that way, Oasis were unstoppable at this point. Great show or awful show, they were set to dominate the rock music industry for the next 15 years. And that they did. Is there an even worse Oasis gig in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to subscribe to keep up to date with all my future videos. Stories from the world of music. Click the video on screen to learn about an equally disastrous Fleetwood Mac tour, and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose.